Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hi, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Well, this week we're going to tackle Mac related questions. Um, I had two questions come in in, the, in recent weeks about Mac related things. So the first one comes from Lisa Hicks. She's currently using a Scarlet Studio Suite and a Samsung ITIV Book 4, which is a PC laptop, and she's using Cubase 7. She's getting frustrated with the Cubase, understandably, because it's really designed for production, mixing, and music recording. So she's considering going to Twisted Wave, but first she needs a Mac, uh, at least to use the full-blown version. There is an online version, which is a bit stripped down in comparison to the Mac version for now. She says, I'm in intrigued with the Mac Mini, but as I started to research and read reviews, a lot of users grumbled that the Mini is none too quiet. In addition to the fan noise, people were reporting clicking sounds. Most of these complaints were posted with a 2012 date or earlier, so perhaps the problem has been solved. It sounds like you use a Mac Mini. Do you notice excessive noise? My Samsung is three meters away from my microphone, and I do not notice the fan noise in my recordings at all. Would the Mini be detectable from that distance? Well, Mac Minis are like any other computer with a fan in them, and that the fan gets loud when it has to, or when it's needed. Um, why does the fan get noisy? Well, because the computer is working really hard. My computer's fan does run a lot. Video work is very CPU and GPU, or graphics processor, intensive. So anything that's processing intensive will make the fan run a lot more because it needs to be cooled to deal with all that extra work. So if you're just recording a twisted wave track, that does not require a lot of CPU use at all. It's not a lot of weight on the computer. So the fan will not run much, but the fan always makes some noise. So a Mac Mini does not do well inside the booth with you. But the beauty of having a Mac Mini is you can put it somewhere else. You can put it in another room, in a closet, underneath the desk where it might block some of the noise. Um, but I use it on my show. I can hear the fan running right now. It kind of speeds up, slows down as it needs to. It's not totally silent. So it's not a, a, a computer you want to have inside a booth with you. The MacBook Air, uh, on a contrast, is very quiet. The fan, even when it's running, is only audible if you hold it to your ears. So that might be another option for you if you consider going with another portable computer. Keeping on the Mac subject, though, uh, we got another question that came in about Mac stuff, and this one came from Jorge Velasco from Bogota, Colombia. How oh, cool. Jorge writes, After many years of recording, editing, browsing, and other computer-related tasks, I had to learn to manipulate the mouse with both hands so my right hand can rest for a moment while I edit with the left hand and vice versa. Boy, I know what you're talking about. This really hits home, man. I was wondering if you have tried the Magic Trackpad with Twisted Wave, Adobe Audition, etc., or maybe another kind of mouse or graphic tablet that can make audio editing a little bit less stressing for the hands. Well, I happen to use something called the Magic Trackpad, and I think it works really well. In fact, I switched to the trackpad in the last few months because I noticed my hand was starting to hurt as well. Particularly one of my fingers was getting sore. The hand was getting sore. The tendons were getting sore from repetitive motion of moving the mouse around. So I decided to try out a trackpad and with a little bit of learning curve, you might find that it helps your hand and wrist and everything a whole lot and makes you a pretty efficient editor. So let me point my camera down at the trackpad so you can see what I see. So I went to a trackpad because I was using the Magic Mouse before. And no, I'm not a total Apple freak. It's not because I really, really love Apple mice. It's because the Apple mouse has this touch screen or touch surface on the top that makes scrolling not only up and down like most mice have with a scroll wheel, but the ability to scroll, scroll side to side. And I found that to be really, really efficient when I was working on Twisted Wave. However, holding the mouse like this so I can use the two finger gestures on the top of the mouse I started noticing that this finger actually was starting to get sore. 
because I'm holding it like this and I'm moving it like this. Which, it seems so silly, the mouse weighs almost nothing, but just the repetitive movement of doing this all the time was actually causing maybe early signs of a carpal tunnel. So when I switch to the trackpad, no longer am I having to move the mouse around or grip the mouse with the side of my ring finger. And all four fingers are now doing something more useful. So I get a lot of control using this. I can, let's just open up a file real quick here. So I can uh, do a lot of things with just the fingers on my, on my right hand. For example, of course I can click like any other mouse. I can click and drag, which is on this mouse to click and drag, I have it set up to be a three finger maneuver. So I'm never using the clicking capabilities of this trackpad. It actually can click like a regular mouse, but I have it on this wrist rest where it doesn't click very well. So I just use three fingers to do the click and drag. So three fingers, click and drag. Two fingers, scroll in and scroll out, or I'm sorry, zoom in and zoom out. And two fingers is also scroll left to right. So if I get close, I can scroll left right. So I get a lot of manipulation with my fingers on this one hand. Now trackpad has some extra tricks up its sleeve thanks to the Mac operating system that they talk together. They do all sorts of gestures like I can do this and now I can see my uh, expose multi-desktop to screen and I can move something from one window to another window and have multi desktops. I can jump between my multiple desktops side to side like that. So it does have some advantages if you want to take advantage of those functions. But just working within Twisted Wave itself, I find that it's a very efficient way to work. I do like the three finger select. And once you get used to jumping between one finger for pointing, two for scrolling and up and down for zooming, and three for selecting. I think you'll find it to be a really slick way to work and very efficient and probably less fatiguing on your hands. I said, well, what if you get over these mice tools and you want to use something different? Well, Steve Gonzalez recommended, he said, why don't you try out the Contour Shuttle Pro? He says he's using it as a controller in Reaper for almost everything. Transport control, marking, zoom, scrubbing, editing, exporting, etc. And it says it saves him a lot of time. So maybe consider trying uh, experimenting with the Contour Shuttle. I'll show a picture of what that thing looks like so you can compare. The Shuttle may end up saving you some more keystrokes. It might save you some time too. I can already do scrubbing very easily with Twisted Wave because on Twisted Wave you just click on the timeline up here and scrub. But you may find that you would like to have keyboard shortcuts for doing other things. Maybe you don't like having a key on hand on the keyboard and you want to use a key for marking. That might be a time saver for you. I tend to work with two hands anyway. I've got one hand on the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts like M for marker, Command E for export, things like that, and while my right hand is on my mouse. So I kind of have a two hand workflow as it is. So I don't really miss the fact that I don't have those extra keys on my trackpad. And if you want to have your question answered on a future Widom's World, I'd love to have it. So send it in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com. And if you've got tech support needs that are more urgent or you want one-on-one -on -one support, virtual engineering, twisted wave stacks, anything like that, then please do go over to vostudiotech.com where all those services are available to you. Thanks again for watching. This is George Widom, and I'll see you next week.